Hi, I'm Tim, and welcome to Govberg. Thanks for logging on. Today we are looking at the Blancpain 50 Fathoms in 18 karat rose gold. You can see this upscale dive watch on our website, govbergwatches.com. And if you enjoy these videos, please subscribe to our app, Govberg On Time, for the latest news, views, and reviews of luxury watches. Now, on my wrist, Six and a third inches, 16 centimeters in circumference. The modern 2007 to present Blancpain 50 Fathoms has incredible presence. It's not a gawker inspired, awkward, or overbearing presence. It's a beautiful, luxurious presence. The feel, the look, the finish of this watch just screams 80s Mercedes. And if you're a car guy out there, you're going to know exactly what I mean. Something that is the unarguable engineering reference point for the entire industry. This is a dive watch, yes. It's a professional watch, yes. It could even be called a tool watch. But the feeling of wearing it is the feeling of wearing a truly upscale piece of high horology. Not so much a dive watch, although it's a beautifully functional one. Now, the watch is 45 millimeters across the round of its 18 karat rose gold case. In terms of thickness, it's got a little bit of girth to it, 15.5 millimeters. You can also see how the case is roughly bowl shaped. So although it nestles down a little bit into the skin and sits lower than 15.5, it also cantilevers out a little bit such that there's overhang from the edge of the bezel to the base of the skin. So there can be some issues fitting this under the tightest of dress cuffs. It's usually a pretty good player though because it does have that domed sapphire on the bezel itself that allows sport jacket or blazer sleeves to slide up and over. Now from lug to lug, this one has some span. It's a substantial 50.5 millimeters, but hold on, that's not all that much by modern standards. Keep in mind, I just had a 40.5 millimeter vintage styled Omega Museum watch that was actually a millimeter longer from extremity to extremity. So that's why this watch works well on a smaller wrist like mine. Although it's thick, it's heavy, and it's broad, it doesn't have a huge lug-to-lug -lug span, so it's not going to overhang your wrist in awkward fashion. Moreover, the watch is cleverly styled to accommodate the curve of a smaller forearm. There's a little bit of a downward thrust to the lugs themselves, so they actually start to trace the taper of a smaller wrist, and there's absolutely no constraint between the strap and the edge of the case. So unlike just about all Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Offshore references, you can simply pull the strap straight down around the tighter curve of a smaller forearm and wear this watch securely and with style. Now about that strap, when I try to convey just how different this watch is from most watches in the utility space, I have to emphasize the fit, finish, and the feel of the watch and everything attached to it. This alligator leather black strap feels like a Kevlar vest. It is incredibly heavy. Everything that I'm touching is definitely a cut above standard leather, even standard alligator leather. Blancpain just opted for a higher grade. Now on the back, they use a feature that I really like. I've seen this on a lot of modern Zeniths and Blancpain gets the plot. This is rubber coated so that instead of having relatively vulnerable, short-lived calfskin on the bottom, you have a rubber coat to isolate the leather from skin moisture, oils, grit on a hot day. This strap, as long as you don't actually take it in the water, is going to live long and prosper with you. Now the pin buckle, beautiful 18 karat rose gold, suits the case beautifully. The finish of it on both sides is gorgeous. Brushed on the underside, polished on the flanks and the top. No detail is a default detail here. Now of course, you do have screw fixed lugs, which is to say that there are no delicate spring bars holding this strap on. And if you want to put it on a Blancpain X71 bracelet, you can do that too. You can easily swap between the two. You just have to use the screwdriver that Blancpain sells to do it. Screw fixed lugs are more expensive to make and it takes a little longer to swap out the strap, but it also allows far more security and resilience when you have this incredibly upscale and handsome watch on your wrist with its weight this is really the only way to fix the strap or the bracelet to the case, and the case is spectacular. High polish on all sides, it features Blancpain's now classic sapphire-capped, fully loomed bezel. That's right, the sapphire itself, cambered to resemble a vintage acrylic, gives this bezel incredible luster. It actually acts as a visual extension of the dial itself. So while this is a 45 millimeter watch, the visual impression is far larger. And because sapphire covers and protects the underlying bezel, all of these elements, calibrations and numerals, as well as the index at 12, can be fully loomed. So this watch has a unique and highly pleasing 
nighttime or low light look. It's incredibly expressive, legible. It's just as easy to read at night as it is in the day. But in the day, you can see that Blancpain once again goes that extra mile with the dial itself. All hand applied indices and Arabic numerals at 12 and 6, they're rose gold to match the case, the bezel, and the buckle. It's beautifully finished and you can see that although the indications of the caliber 1315 movement are not complex, the movement itself is incredibly refined. Now you unscrew the crown, which feels like the steering wheel of an 80s Mercedes, once again. It's incredibly substantial and beautifully knurled. It feels great in the hand when you're winding the 120 hour power reserve via the three mainspring barrels, but it has all of the cardinal dive watch functions. For instance, when you pull the crown to its extremity, you can hack the balance, stopping the seconds hand for precise synchronization to a known accurate reference timer or your buddy's dive watch. Also, when the watch is in the second crown position, you can use the quick set function for the date. Now the movement does have an incredible 35 joules, three mainspring barrels, 120 hours of power reserve, and it is free sprung with an anti-magnetic soft iron cage around it, so it's protected from high energy home offices with wiring looms, computers, and stereos that can often magnetize the hairspring of conventional dive watches. It's a thoughtful refinement, and although you can't see the movement inside that soft iron case and beneath the 18 karat case back, the finish of the caliber 1315 is far above of the class standards for a dive watch. It's a Blancpain through and through. You can see this Blancpain 50 fathoms, 45 millimeters in 18 karat red gold on our website.